So when I, a, when I was in the Navy, Isaiah got real sick one morning. It was about 2 o'clock, so I say morning very vaguely. To me, that's still not bedtime. So about 2 o'clock at night, Isaiah is sick. And then, so I try to go to the store and buy medicine. The state of Virginia does not allow you to buy medicine on Sunday mornings. So therefore, I can't figure out what to do. He's too young to take normal cough medicine, and special medicine is restricted. So finally I called one of my friends, figuring they're still probably partying, it's only two o'clock. And I called Desiree. And I go to meet her, and she gives me what Isaiah needed to get better. And if I told you anything, I missed being at home. When I, when I was stationed in Norfolk, it was nothing like when Virginia Beach, I love Virginia Beach, being with people I actually fell along with. And I hated being in Norfolk. Yeah, I, I did it just for the training, and it was only for like, you know, nine months, and I hated every minute of it. Because one, I hated the training, because I threw up every day. That's, that was my training, yeah. It was really difficult. And so I, I didn't have this great relationship I should have had with people around me. But I, but I realized something. And we just heard in this proverb is, is that whole, it's better to have a neighbor who's near than a friend. Because I could have called up friends. I could have called up family. And, you know, they would have been 20 hours away. And I could have called them up and said, hey, I need some medicine so he can sleep. I was going to be back by the time, you know, the stores would open Sunday afternoon. And we have an expression about neighbors. I think this is really hard. This was sugar at one point. But you've heard it. You know, you go to your neighbor to borrow a cup of. And it's, it's, it's that expression. And, and it makes sense because none of us would seriously go, I need some sugar. I'm going to drive my family two hours away. You know, I'm right here. And I've got it in the oven. And I just need a little bit of sugar for a little more care. Okay, stop everything, freeze it, I'll be back in four hours. I'm going to drive there, drive back, it'll be four hours, I'll get my sugar, I'll get back to cooking, at that point, everything is ruined. I burned the cake. And we understand it when it comes to things like that, but it is so easy for us to not do that with the church. This is home. Weird term for me, because honestly, I live in a new place every three years. It just kind of works for me. And so when I say something is home, it's interesting. Because how many of us have ever thought about we don't pick our home, anyone we pick our family? And the Bible teaches us that a neighbor who is near. But, but Jesus takes it, and he doesn't stop at that point. Jesus doesn't stop at the point where we say, a neighbor's better who is near. He says, the family is those who are me. The family is those who are around us. Today we are in Mark chapter 3. We'll be starting in verse 7. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea, and Jerusalem, and Idumea, from beyond the Jordan, from all around Tyre and Sidon. When the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him. And he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. Verse 13, he continues, he says, And he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired. And they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach, and have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the names Bernerges, that is, sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, and Simon, and the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Then he went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. 
And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. Could you imagine your family coming back to your family and they're thinking you're crazy? That's exactly what they did to Christ. When Christ goes out, he calls disciples and they're gathered and there's so many that he's like, I gotta get in the boat, they're gonna kill me. I'm gonna get trampled. There's too many people. They're all coming to him and he has all these disciples and then he looks at it and what we would call home is our family. And he looks at his family and they're trying to stop him. He's crazy. Again, when his family heard it, they went out to seize him. For they were saying, he is out of his mind. Jesus says it another way. He says, a prophet is without honor. <clears throat> and our first gut reaction is to think about our... Think about it. Think, think about how difficult it has to be for Jesus to have his whole family coming out to stop him because he's crazy. He's out there teaching and people are coming to him from all over. He, he desires 12 of them and he points them apostles. And then he gets back to his home and his home is doing what? Trying to stop him. Trying to tell him to quit doing what he's doing. They're trying to seize him. Forcibly stop him from doing what he's doing. And in verse 31, he tells us some of the most beautiful words about each other. Verse 31, and his mother and his brothers came. They're ready to seize him. And standing outside, they sent him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him. And they said to him, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. We live in a society where we have phones. They're me if you like them. They're technology to me, so therefore they can use and mess up. We have cars. We can get long distances. And we have a habit of staying so connected to our home. Instead of looking around us, as the scripture says, and Jesus points to it and he says these. These are my mother. These are my brothers. These are my sisters. And when we run out of sugar, sugar, when we run out of energy, when we run out of, we're down, when we're beat down, when we are struggling, when we are hurting, we do a lot of that dumb thing with the sugar. Well, if I drive two hours, I drive two hours back, I can go get some sugar. And no matter where we go, we're always looking to home. We're always looking back, where is home? And we forget that we are home. If somebody asks me where home is, you should be able to say, where my brothers, my mother, my sisters are. You should be able to say, I can tell you where my home is. Let me go show you my home. Let me go show you my family. But we don't. Because our family has something in it that we forget to take with us. Openness. Most families accept us. I, I can put a big cat in most families accept us. Because he puts his, I mean, I love how Jesus, he comes in and he says, you know, do you notice how all the restrictions he says? He says, whoever meets at this location at this time, on this day of the week, exactly here, is my mother, brother, and sister. Well, that's not exactly what he said. 
Well, everyone who believes exactly as I do, because I'm right on everything, right? That's what he said. He could actually say, he could, Jesus could say, since I'm right on everything, everyone who agrees with me perfectly. Even his apostles are confused at this point. They're like, okay. The, those who are following him are like, here are your brothers and your mother. And he's going, no, you, you, you just messed up again. I would have done it. I'd be like, you're, she's your mom, obviously. Those are obviously your kinfolk. And Jesus said, no, you, you don't even get that much. And after he's already confronted them and said, no, you don't get it. He then says, mother, brother, and sister. And, and we can put down a list and we can say, oh, you know, you got to have this perfect list. And I love his list. Verse 35, for whoever does the will of God. Whoever does the will of God. I love when they go back out and they, they start really working, when the apostles are really working. And he sends out the 70 and they're just, ooh, miracle, miracle, miracle. Ooh, exorcism, healing. And you're just like, whoa, that's awesome. And then what happens? They saw somebody else doing it. Mm -mm -mm. They come back and they're like, Jesus, those guys were doing it too. They were doing this miracle stuff like we are. We were watching, we were like, we're doing what we're supposed to. We're exercising demons. And then they started doing it. Jesus, uh, you can go take care of this, Jesus. And, and Jesus, obviously, in his good frame of mind, obviously does what we expect and says, well, since they're not part of our fellowship, let's leave them up. Let's, let's go get, take care of it. Let's go rebuke them. Now, not, not the story again. The story there is, Jesus says, who is not against us is for us. But, but they're not even hanging out with us, Jesus. You didn't even send them out with us. We've been following you. They haven't. We've been doing what you wanted. We've been right there with you. They haven't. And Jesus doesn't do any of that. He doesn't do any of the churchianity. He doesn't do any of the religiosity. He does Christianity. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Because I guarantee, no matter who you're sitting next to, especially the more you know the person you're sitting next to, you disagree about something. I, I, my favorite part is the Lord's Supper. If you've never noticed, I love the Lord's Supper. It's so cool. It's like Jesus, once again, saying you need to have visual aids. And I was like, yes, Jesus, that's true for me. He's like, you have to have something physical. You're too dumb to get the point. Yes, Jesus, I agree with you. I love communion. And the weird thing about communion is we have so many opinions on communion. So many opinions. Bread, minis, big piece, salted, unsalted, honey, no honey. Should it be made with bitter herbs, no bitter herbs? I mean, there is a list we can disagree on, and we've just got to the bread. And then obviously, how many of y'all have ever heard of one cuppers, two cuppers, three cuppers, four cuppers, mini cuppers? Wine, welches, you know. There's never a grape juice. It's always Welch's or wine, but you know, somebody in the middle. Is it in the midst of a meal? Is it taken daily from house to house, breaking bread? Or is it something that's only done on the first day of the week? Blah, 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 blah. Guess what? This beautiful image, this beautiful image, this body of Christ, this blood of the covenants, to be distorted. Because we, we, we really like lists, and this is a terrible list. Whoever does the will of God. So that was. Whoever does the will of God. Okay, number one. Number two is. Huh. I'm missing it. I'm looking for a list, guys. I mean, we're good at lists. I love lists. Top ten lists, you know. 
I remember that the late night show with the top ten list. And I'm looking at this, trying to find the list, and I'm like, whoever does the will of God. I wouldn't even put a one out front of it. You can get the point. There's only one. And we sit here today with people beside us who disagree on many, many things. And we can sit there and we can say, there's some place out there we probably fit better. It's true. I, I remember at Kemsville Christian Church, it was probably... The place that I felt that they accepted me the most and I grew the most. And you know what? I could sit here today and go, well, not home. Because that's the place I like the most. I, I could. I mean, I could do that and so could you. You could sit there today and you could say, well, my family's here. My favorite place is here. My favorite is this. Or you could be honest and say, you know what? This is now my family. This is my family. And when I'm hurting and I need somebody, I don't need to get on the phone. Because phones have terrible hooks. I tried it. It's just like, oh, missing completely. But I noticed that I come to the church and I have this body that I meet with that's right here every week. And I'm like, I need a hug. And you know what I get? I would hug a whole lot better than that phone. I'm hurting and I have a real person I can talk to who has a facial expression. Who reacts to what I says and not, are you still there? I can't hear you. Well, don't talk when I'm talking, but tell me that you're there while I'm talking. I've never yet figured out phone somewhere. I want to be like, over. Are we good? Okay. But I want that to be your challenge. Is this, phones are terrible replacements for people. People are excellent at being Oh, y'all don't know what people are good at being? They're good at being people, okay? People are excellent. A church is made up of? People. Sometimes you need? Hey, y'all really got dog. <laughs> Hugging people. Okay. No, but that's what I want you to get today. I want you to understand that God has given us a body in His infinite wisdom. Because guess what He said in the beginning? If you need sugar, don't drive to your house. Go next door. Don't drive across the country and go, my brother lives out in, you know, California. I'm going to go out there, eh? <coughs> I have no idea what California sounds like. Um, that was terrible. But if you come to it and you say, God is, God is infinitely wise. God, God is everything I need and he provides for all of my needs. Then you would figure out what he's given around you. You, you. you wouldn't need to say, hey, I need to drive to see my mother, my brothers, and my sisters. You would say, hey, I meet with my mother, my brothers, and my sisters every week. I get to see them all the time. And when I, I, I'm in need, they are my family. And the importance is not lost. When we understand what he has called us to. Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 38. Starting verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter, the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent to be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Everyone. Not who I call, but whom the Lord our God calls to himself. It is the family that's given to us. But we have no more choice in our family than the ones we're birthed into. And looking around at our family, we need to realize what the scripture teaches us on. One that it wasn't us who decides who's in the body. 
I know there's a lot of us who wish we could. Who we could say, you know what? I love you so much, I want you in the body. You're in the body. Yesterday we watched, I watched a baptism. And it's beautiful and frustrating. It's beautiful to think about those that God has you know, brought to himself. It's frustrating to know that I can look at somebody and love them, and as much as I love them, I can't bring them into the family of God. I can teach them, but there's nothing I can do to make them think. Because God is the one who makes family. Today, today we offer His invitation. Because we're not worthy to offer that kind of invitation. We offer an invitation that says that God loves you. Jesus is Lord and He still wants you. Jesus wants you to be cleansed of your sin that He wants you to give to Him. Jesus wants you to confess Him as Lord. Jesus wants you to be buried with Him in baptism, raised up into His life so that you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and are blessed as a family. Because then God designs who's in the family. If there's anybody who hasn't done that, there's no reason to put God off. Any love for God should cause you to respond to God a certain way. It is only God who is rejected. If there's anyone today who needs prayers, because guess what? This is that family. This is that family that's real and not just electrical sounds on a speaker. Or if there's anybody who wishes to submit to the eldership, we ask that you would come now as we sing and as we sing.